Hey guys, this week we're talking about force velocity profiles. We're going to talk about how to actually perform one, why you should do it, and uh, how to respond, which is where most people fail. We're going to look at defining the qualities of strength, and that's just a look at like what the different velocities, the potential velocities, and what, uh, what does it mean to your training. We're also going to talk about performing it, the force velocity profile, interpreting said profile, and how to respond. Qualities of strength. Bosco is the first one to really dial it in, meaning like, you know, what um, each velocity zone meant to what you're actually doing, like what qualities were you working. But Brian Mann, I think, in the last few years has done a great job of getting more specific with those zones. So, number one, and this is Brian Mann's little um, uh, velocity zones that he did through, that he developed through his own research. All right, first we got absolute strength. We all know what that means. That's maxing out. That's going heavy. That's max force production. That's going to be somewhere between 0.5 meters per second or slower. Accelerated strength, that's um, Bosco actually defined that as lifting a heavy load as fast as possible. And really, though, that should be said. Whatever the load is, you should, you know, as fast as possible is important. Speed strength is defined as a moderately heavy weight, um, as fast as moving a moderately heavy weight as fast as possible. Speed strength, moving light to moderate loads at very high velocity. And then there's starting strength. Um, starting strength is like, it's going to be faster than 1.3 meters per second. That's basically moving light weights at extremely high velocities. Um, Bonnerchuk explained this quality of strength is the ability to quickly overcome inertia from a dead stop. And so these two in the middle, the strength speed and speed strength, that those are both um, velocity zones that are going to lead to increased power. I mean, at the end of the day, depending on where you fall in the in the profile, anything because meaning if you're a high velocity person but not very strong. Then spending time accelerative strength and absolute strength might help with, with um, your giving you more of an ability to create power. However, strength, speed, speed, strength, those are both going to give you instant expression of power. And the benefits are going to lead to more power. So, And the starting strength for all you athletes out there, that's going to be important too. But we'll get deeper into that as, as we go. How to perform fr a profile. I think it works best with uh, front squats, back squats, uh, strict presses, bench presses. The only thing I, I wouldn't do, now this is just me, is use a regular barbell deadlift because it's just you have that friction of the bar dragging up your leg, which could really throw off and skew, you know, depending on how close you keep the bar. So I don't know if I would do a whole lot of that, but... Um, you know, but that's up to you. You know, that's why I said it's just my opinion. Also, make sure something that I didn't write on this presentation is before you perform a present, you know, um, a force velocity profile, make sure that you, you have a standard warm up because, like, you don't want your warm up to be the thing that skews the, um, you know, the improvements or lack of improvements. So, make sure you have a standard warm up, a standard time, uh, and whatever you do, repeat it the next time just so you have more um, precise and accurate test results. So here's the way I do it. Percentages and, and the reps. So I start out with 15% of the 1RM. I don't spend, you know, I'm, later you're going to see that I go up by fives. But I'm, I'm not going to go 15, 20, 25% because you're going to know all you need to know by after you do the 15% uh, and the 20%. Sorry, you know if you're and if you're lacking, which I'll tell you in a minute. I don't want to jump ahead, but anyway, so fifteen percent, twenty five percent, two to three reps. You definitely want a few extra reps at the beginning, especially because it becomes difficult, you know, to express complete velocities at those lower ranges because you're going to end up leaving the ground and so it takes a person a couple reps to get used to i'm going to accelerate through and i might actually leave the ground so it, uh, i would definitely recommend a few extra reps on these early percentages then you go 25 percent for two to three reps 
30% two reps, 40% two reps. And then once you get to 50, you can start doing, you know, one to two, um, 55, 60, 65, 70, and all the way up to 100% uh, with one reps after the warm up and after the beginning. So that's how you perform it. Obviously, well, I'll show you here. Here's a, here is a, a profile that I developed from a, a particular athlete I've left unnamed, and you'll see how I read this thing. So as you can see, I've, I have made this little uh, Excel sheet that will, it will shade red, or that's kind of pink, but it'll shade pink if the person doesn't fall within the um, velocity that it should. And so here's what I do. I, you know, I took, as you'll see in a second, I actually did, the, you know, got the, gathered the data from all of my athletes over the course of the first year that we were here. And so, so this, these are all based on my own athletes. And so, so if you have power athletes or weightlifters or, you know, volleyball players, football players, then this should be pretty dead on for you guys too. But there are ranges and people are going to, you know, I don't expect everyone to be at 1.54 meters per second, but we just took, you know, um, based on the research, there was a really cool research article out there that just said a, there's basically a standard deviation of about 7% up or down. So, um, and it, all the way through is, is what ended up happening. And so, as you'll see too, I labeled this, you know, these first two or three are starting strength. As you can see, the, he, he, this is pretty low. So he was out of the acceptable range, you know, at the 15% low, which is starting strength. And then he, he caught up, but he's at the very low end of the acceptable range. And here, same thing, he, at the very low end. But anyway, then he, you know, he starts to get a little bit better. 1.18 is dead in the middle, and this is speed strength. So here's the way I'm interpreting is that this person, this athlete, it, it definitely needs more work on expressing power, which is the strength speed, and you know being able to uh, his rate of force development, rate coding is not very good. So I'm going to do things that's going to uh, improve rate of force development uh, code code. So I'm going to work with you know exercises. Under, in a way that will improve rate coding. That's basically how fast the brain, the CNS, sends the signal to the muscle to actually contract. And, you know, um, and just rate overall improving the rate of force development. And I will also, um, as you see, I will actually put what I would do. Contrast training, pairing squats with jumps, quality time uh, spent training in the strength speed quality. And bands are great for eliciting improvements in velocity and power. So with this person, because of the nature of where uh, he's, you know, I wouldn't say failing, where he's outside the norm, yet the bands are always, if you need to get faster, then you need to lift in a way that's faster. The body is super, like, specific to its adaptation. So if you want to improve power, improve speed, then the movements that you spend the most time on should be movements that are faster. Bands move faster simply because, number one, they're adding to gravity and the fact that it pulls you down, so it's going to speed up the eccentric, um, and by the way, foreshadowing. One of the upcoming articles and videos that we're going to make is going to talk about the different types of adaptations and what elicits those adaptations. So that'll be a good one coming up. Um, but anyway, so like if, if I want to move fast, then bands are a great way to move fast. But also, of course, um, doing stuff like the jumping, the bounding, the plyometrics, those are great too because that will help with elasticity. And a lot of times, if someone's not very good at starting strength, you know, their elastic qualities are not that good. And remember too that I had you guys do like, you know, three to four reps, like if you're really elastic, it should get better and better and better, which is another reason for the low percentages that I want you guys to do more than one rep. So, final thoughts. So, getting big and strong isn't the answer to everything. 
other adaptations to consider. Remember, I'm about to do, you know, here shortly, we're going to really uh, define the different types of adaptations. But, you know, consider these, though. Elasticity, tendons, ligaments, efficiency of neuromuscular system, and certain qualities at the cellular level within the muscle fibers, especially tightened protein filament, will all these contribute to an athlete's um, elasticity. So to improve elasticity, which this um, athlete really needed, is bounding, plyometrics, higher velocity exercises, and um, heavier strength training versus like, you wouldn't want that athlete to do a lot of like eight and 10 reps. And here's why, uh, as you'll find out in a future article that I'm working on, that when you're doing like tens and you're going to failure and you're doing fives and going to failure, you will get very similar hypertrophy uh, adaptations. However, you will not, and get the same abilities to produce force and you uh, from the higher reps and really what the one that uh, really gets me is the, the heavier reps does a better job at creating tendons that are stronger and creating the the neuromuscular response between the muscle and the tendon and creating you know better uh, collagen matrix that's in the tendons does a better job at all of that so uh, long slow high rep sets um, doesn't necessarily because what happens is that um, the when you're doing lighter weight for multiple reps what happens is you get the low threshold motor units being recruited at first, and then towards the end when you get fatigued, those stop, and now you've got the higher threshold units. And so they're not working at the same time. i got to give a quick shout-out to Chris Beersley. A lot of that right there comes directly from his work. And uh, if you don't follow him, you should. He's a great dude. So, But anyway, you know, you need to know all of these different adaptations when you set out that's why like when you know people do coach everyone the same way they do the exact same workout you know some people will respond big time and some people will not respond hardly at all and so it's the individual and what they need that's going to determine that so another adaptation hypertrophy a bigger muscle is a strong one but muscle fiber shift when you're doing um, lots of hypertrophy and with strength training you'll get a shift from less oxidative uh, muscle fibers to a more oxidative type. So what I'm saying is that type 2X or type 2A, uh, I'm sorry, type 2X will become more like type 2A. And so you definitely want to avoid that if you're trying to create explosive athletes. You're also going to get more antagonist involvement because when you're going heavy, the antagonist, you know, so like let's say in a squat. So on your way down, you know, you're lengthening your your uh, quadriceps well then the hamstrings might be activating a whole lot more than they really need to to stabilize the joint and so that's good because it keeps you safe but it's not necessarily good when it comes to you know adaptations outside of the squat so if i'm trying to, to get more powerful for weightlifting that's a big no-no you want agonist and very little antagonist um involvement so you got to consider that. If you're trying to make someone faster for sprinting, once again, that's not a very good relationship. You know, when you're the, the agonist and antagonist are both working, it slows things down. It gives you more stability, but it slows you down. <clears throat> Other adaptations are not necessarily good for speed. You know, you get a, a greater panation angle. So we'll get more into all that when we do the upcoming uh, um, article and video. But... With each muscle fiber, they all have a certain pination angle. Where so, pination angle, like the greater the angle, that means there it's, it's a shorter muscle fiber because what it is, pination angle is in relation to the different muscle fibers, to the longitudinal a uh, axis of the muscle itself. So, if there's a bunch of fibers, you know, that have this great um, angle, that means there's more of them, but they're shorter. So it's stronger, but it takes a lot more time to actually do the contraction so you know if you're really into speed you gotta you know you definitely want you know a nation or strong muscle muscle fiber but you know speed is also important too so just consider that you know um 
the hypertrophy when it's just when you're doing it just big long slow movements you're going to get a greater pination angle and then uh, by the way i know that's misspelled that autocorrect i know how to spell it p-e and anyway internal moment arms increase so like um in the slightest but when the muscle grows larger and it crosses you know any particular joint more then that also is going to create a slower joint it's going to be stronger and in a much better situation but if imagine if the, if the tendon crosses the joint um at a pretty you know, say like two centimeters more it just takes it longer to create that movement if that makes sense anyway we'll definitely go into those adaptations um here in the next few weeks uh, of the series i want to do on adaptations so higher velocity exercises especially with bands will create adaptations for higher velocity movements in general <clears throat> Final thoughts, um, continued bare minimum response. If, if I were you, I would, I would do a profile for all of my athletes and at least create three different types of a program. It can look very similar, but just one should be a program for fast and weak athletes, the so people who are at high velocity but low force. One for slow athletes, low velocity, and strong athletes. And one for the power athletes. And so power being probably like, you know, it would be your base program that you should write. You know, with slow and strong uh, athletes, you should create more speed work. You know, bands, consider that. More plyometrics. And the fast and weak, maybe focus, you know, on the, the grinds, you know, the squats, the slower movements. So um, I've included some velocities that match well with our power athletes. And so now you can see the differences in squat bench and deadlift and then for strict press so uh, you can use that when you do your force velocity profile uh, or do your you know gather your own data or go online and and do your own research and see what velocity should be but um, i've given you everything you could possibly need for it so i hope you enjoy it and put it to work remember in conclusion not all adaptations are created equal we're going to talk about more individuals need some individual attention and then once you you understand the different adaptations that we're going to talk about later <laughs> that are possible then you realize that vbt is crucial that's the thing with me i needed to define what each of my individual athletes needed knowing that they all need different adaptations so anyway hope you guys can put this to work quickly if you have any questions by all means email me you know it's travis at jimaware.com